Hey, JT, good to have you back. Listen, we're gonna talk about gardening today. Uh, as you know, I've got five raised beds. Uh, got them here behind me, you can see the whole thing. Uh, you and I have been gardening kind of virtually together for the past eight or 10 years. You're in Austin, I'm in Atlanta. Uh, right now it's about almost six o'clock p.m. and it's April 18th. So uh, I'm a little bit late getting this go going, but uh, it's been kind of cold spring, so I think I'm gonna be okay. And plus at six o'clock, as you can see, the whole garden has sunlight. Uh, so good sunlight from nine till six. Boy, that's like, uh, that's 10 or 11 hours of good sun. So um, garden doesn't look so good right now because uh, I haven't done a thing to it except pulled up a few weeds, maybe cleaned up a little bit, but really haven't done anything. But I'm gonna walk around uh, each garden bed, what I've done in each one, why I've done it, what's working, what's not working, and then we're gonna fast forward in a little while and we'll get to um, kind of what I've planted each one. But right now I'm gonna show you the before and we'll get to the after, here we go. All right, this is bed number one. Um, I've got three of them similar to this. This one is probably three and a half by eight. I've used pressure treated pine. Those are two by tens around the side. Um, I've been basically filling this soil for the last six or eight years since I built these beds. You notice in the middle, um, I found some fence in my backyard. It's some pretty heavy duty wire. I think it's a rebar that they use for concrete. I think it's three by four squares. As you can see, I framed it in with some two by fours. So I put that in the middle. The reason I did that is on one side, uh, actually on both sides of this, I'm gonna put in tomatoes. And that seems to work in this bed. And in the middle, I usually put something that climbs. So in this one, I'm gonna do like beans. So early in the season, the beans win because they climb faster. Uh, but then later, uh, by the time summer gets pretty going, those tomatoes are gonna be, they're gonna be about four feet tall, as you know, and they get just huge. So there's no more room for uh, more than two tomato plants in this thing. And I'll show you the cages that I use, but this is kind of tomato garden. And I'll talk about those white pipes in a minute. Don't waste your money is all I'm saying. All right, so bed number two kind of narrow, uh, same size. Actually, this is by two with, uh, I use pressure treated two, two by sixes side by side on this one. Could have just used two by twelves. This is what I had sitting around. Why is it thin? Well, the reason I did this one is I was thinking early on I was gonna make it taller for carrots. Didn't work out. Uh, but what I'm using this one for now is mostly for blooming either herbs or flowers. And so that, that attracts the butterflies, the bees, anything else that's gonna help me pollinate. So this is, this is kind of my pollination um, box right in the middle of my garden. Seems to be working out pretty well. Gives a lot of color to the garden. I kind of like it. Um, and But I will put some herbs in there just because I, I like to cook with herbs. All right, box number three. So this one has been kind of an all-purpose one. So I've just kind of filled it up with whatever I felt like uh, brewing that year. So this uh, has been peppers, it's been beets, it's been, um, what else have I put in here? Uh, some tomatoes, um, hot peppers, um, some squash, that didn't really work out, just takes up too much room, uh, and some herbs. So this year, I think what I'm gonna do is put more of a um, thinner, um, almost like a potting soil in here and do more root vegetables. So root vegetables don't like this hard dirt that we get here in Georgia. So I end up, it just ends up getting packed down. So I think I'm gonna move some of this dirt into another box and then fill this up with something uh, more like peat or like a, almost like a potting soil. Uh, give it some good uh, nutrients and uh, carrots will like that, beets will like that, any other root vegetables that are gonna wanna get into the soil deeper. Um, because these boxes are really only about eight inches of dirt, usually that's good, but for a carrot, you need to go a lot deeper. So. That's what I'm gonna do this year in this box. And let's move on to the next one. All right, box number four. Uh, and I know you like this one because you asked me about this one. So this one is another probably three and a half by eight feet. Um, and I actually use two by sixes. So this one isn't very deep at all, but this is a, a multi-purpose box and I'll tell you why. Um, what I've got here is kind of a thinner, uh, kind of a three by four square rebar, bendable, you can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. And so I made an arch all the way over from one side to the other. As you can tell, kind of braced it here in the middle. And so what do I do with that? Um, I plant cucumbers on both sides and, and they 
grow into this arch and I'm telling you by middle of summer, you know, it, the, the full thing is just covered with cucumbers. And the great thing about it is they hang from the inside and I can just pick them real easy without trying to dig around. And I really work at keeping them off the ground um, at the base of these. So plant them on the inside and I start feeding those vines through the fence and, and it goes right up and it's awesome. So you just gotta pay, to, pay attention to it for the first month. But until they grow, there's plenty of sun in the middle. So I put whatever plants I have left over in the middle, I could put some herbs there. Uh, I put some uh, other vegetables that kind of grow faster early on in the year. Um, I tried carrots in there and didn't really work out. Um, but other plants that, you know, even a pepper, those seem, seem to grow pretty fast. Uh, but kind of just pick something that can grow in the middle. Uh, and by the middle of summer, if they've already harvested, then you don't have to worry about them getting too much sun. All right, getting down low on this one. So this is kind of one of my favorite beds. Why? Because I don't have to do anything to it. So this is the asparagus bed. And all it is is asparagus. So um, this is what a two by, what is that? Two by six, two by eight. Anyway, um, so I have, I planted these asparagus in this box about, I don't know, six years ago. And they come as a root, you put them in the ground. They usually don't come up much the first year, but once they start coming up, dude, I mean, I can't stop them. So these things literally grow four to six inches a day. And if you don't keep up with them, they'll be three or four feet before you know it. So um, I'm gonna cut these today, maybe tomorrow. And they just keep coming until about midsummer when they're done. And when they're, um, once uh, kind of midsummer comes, then you just wanna let them go. Just let them grow. They'll grow into this huge, huge bush. They'll be four or five feet tall. They'll fern out. And you want them to do that until uh, late fall or the first freeze. And then you cut them off right to the ground here. Um, and then you fill it up with mulch, which I've done here, which keeps the, uh, the, the uh, nutrients in the soil, moisture in the soil, keeps it warm enough all winter long so it doesn't kill the roots. Um, and also keeps the weeds back pretty well. So asparagus, man, invest in that for one box somewhere and you'll have asparagus for years to come low no maintenance at all hey one thing i wanted to show you these asparagus remember uh this is two days two days of growth since i showed them to you the first time crazy all right last thing i want to talk about is well a couple more things uh i do want to show you this really really awesome waste of money of a um irrigation system that i put in so each box has its own irrigation pipes. You can see this box has three, the other one over there has two. Come over here, they've got three all the way around. Isn't that beautiful? Looks great. And then what I've done is I put it all underground and it goes right on over there to my, to my faucet. And as you can see, I put a timer in there. Look at that, isn't that an awesome timer? Isn't that great? Yeah, it was a big waste of money. A lot of work uh, putting uh, the pipes underwater and here's why. Um, is I don't have enough water pressure coming out of that pipe to fill all of these pipes. Because what I'll do, you see over there, see those uh, PVCs? I would attach those and they'd go across the garden. I'd drill holes in them. So um, what would happen is I turn on the water in one of these beds, all the water would gather in one pipe at the bottom and dribble out in the middle. And so I'd have this big puddle in the middle on one pipe and I didn't have enough pressure to fill all the pipes to drill, to uh, kind of drop across all the length of each box, let alone more than one box. So in my opinion, don't waste your money. I think, I wanna say those are half inch, maybe three quarter inch. So those are half inch, I, I'm pretty sure those are half inch pipes. They could be three quarter. Either way, you know, what I ended up doing, this has been here for what, three years now. Used it one time, didn't work. I just turn on the hose with the sprayer head. It takes me 15 minutes to do a whole garden. You know, I'm sipping a glass of wine, doing this, talking on the phone, just being outside instead of letting the machine do it. So don't do that. Um, another thing, hey, just notice that, you know, there's some weeds out here and there's uh, it's kind of some junk everywhere. What I found is the, uh, the weeds in the walkways do not affect plants. Uh, they grow with or without weeds in the walkway. So it looks ugly, but I'll clean it up and I just keep mulch down there. Uh, you know, number two, 
the wood around my garden, even though it's all kind of getting old and crappy, doesn't affect my plants. They grow just great anyway. What affects plants is what? Sunlight, water, soil, nutrition. That's what they care about. You know, they don't care about what the plant next to them is eating. If there's a weed next to them and they're eating nutrition, as long as they're not eating their, you know, taking food off their table, they're gonna grow just fine. So I'm not worried too much about kind of a beautiful garden, although I'd love to have have that look great. Man, it just seems like these plants just grow with or without my, <laughs> with or without my ingenious contraptions and uh, intelligence. So um, what I also have here, as you can see, I've got a little uh, plant holder. I'll put a, um, a um, hummingbird feeder here, which kind of attracts, I mean, they work on my plants as well. Um, what else? Uh, I do try to keep a pretty decent perimeter around this thing. So, you know, I'm putting, uh, you know, I'm putting whatever, um, a roundup around it, kind of keep it, keep it in check. Uh, I used to have a fence all the way around. It died last year. So um, the fence just got wore out from weather. So um, I kind of let that collapse, but I'll probably put it back up again. I originally put it up because we had dogs. Dogs were getting in here and I had to fence it off. Now I have a dog that could care less about, about the, uh, the garden. So um, that's kind of the overview. If you've got any questions, let me know. But uh, part two of this uh, video will be kind of the planting. Uh, so we can kind of walk through what that looks like. All right, um, so now I'm gonna start kind of cleaning up the garden. So I uh, went to Home Depot yesterday, got a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna walk you through what I got. So um, of course I've got my tools, got a mini hoe there, uh, shovel, and my little, it's my little handy dandy, little hand tool. I got a bunch of cypress mulch. I'll probably just use that for in between the beds to keep it uh, kind of clean. Use my gloves, kind of key, using the gloves really not necessarily for the dirt, but um, in an old garden that I'm kind of redoing, I'm a little nervous about copperheads. We got we have some copperheads here in Georgia. All right, so I've got a couple different types of dirt. Uh, what I normally do is I add this garden soil uh, into my box as well as black cow. So I usually kind of do equal parts of garden soil as opposed to potting soil, very different. Uh, so equal parts garden soil and black cow. Black cow is the manure that gives a lot of great nutrients. Uh, and aerates the soil. Uh, I'll use this bag of potting soil because I've got a few um, pots out there that I'm gonna fill with maybe some flowers or just uh, some, some color. All right, plants. I got some, uh, those are sweet potatoes. I got a bunch of stuff here. So I've got some hot jalapenos. What is that, oregano. We've got uh, peppers. That looks like a tomato sort of tomato there yeah burpees big boy and then uh, oregano uh, more peppers out of pepper oh no it's cucumbers several different types of cucumbers because we're gonna be doing a lot of cucumbers there's another uh, green pepper another tomato right there I think that's yeah Roma tomatoes love Roma tomatoes mint basil what is that I think that's a, another pepper Tabasco yeah do some Tabasco and here's another um, tomato. I like those little. Uh, and then uh, I've got some flowers and I'm gonna be putting flowers around because I like uh, to have pollinators. So we've got hummingbirds here in Georgia, uh, here in Atlanta. And I like to have the butterflies and have the bees. Man, let's get, let, get, let nature kind of do the work for you. Okay. You know, so I'm gonna clean out these boxes as best I can, get the weeds out all I can, right? Um, but you know, it's not gonna be perfect and you can't stop weeds. They're just gonna keep coming. As long as we're living, weeds are coming. So um, I would say clean them out the best you can, get some, uh, some fresh soil in there, get some good fertilizer in there and plant your plants and let them roll. Um, another key thing I would say is make sure you have water. Water nearby, pretty key, makes things a lot easier. Uh, 
I would gauge your garden on how much time you have to put into it. So I've got five boxes here. One of them is kind of uh, going on its own with the asparagus, but um, five is about the max. And each year I seem to put less and less plants in them because I realize too many plants, uh, they get on top of each other. They don't get enough nutrition or maybe not enough sunlight. And, uh, and I don't need them. So uh, I just kind of keep paring it back. Weeds, they're always gonna be with us. Uh, so just do the best you can, get, get all the weeds out early on. Um, get some good new soil in there, get some fertilizer in there. Plant your plants, let them go. So water, sun, food, and they'll just keep growing with or without weeds. So uh, we're gonna clean these up, freshen them up, get the plants in, and we'll get right back. So I've <clears throat> broken up most of the dirt and I broke up the dirt just so I can get to the weeds out, right? Break up the dirt, pull out the weeds, and I throw them in my compost pile over there in the corner. Uh, that's just kind of where I pile everything up. Some of it's going around the outside. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, um, I'm actually gonna put some of the soil from this bed over there. This just seemed to be a lot lighter, uh, a little more aerated. That's really compacted down. So I want a little bit lighter soil over there because I'm gonna put uh, sweet potatoes in there. And sweet potatoes don't like, similar to carrots, don't like compact soil, kind of messes them up. Plus the water kind of stays on them and you don't want water to stay on sweet potatoes, turns them into mush. So I'm gonna lighten up that soil over there so it gets good drainage. I'm gonna try to give each one of these um, beds a fresh bag of garden soil and manure, work it in level it out, maybe a little mound in the, in the middle, uh, and then um, plant some plants. Here we go. This took me about an hour and a half for those of you counting at home. And so I'm gonna quit for the day. And then tomorrow, after this kind of settles down, I'm gonna do some planting. I might get some more plants because uh, I think I, I'm missing a few. Anyway, so pretty much that easy. All the hard work's done. Planting is easy. Watering is easy. I'm gonna go ahead and water the, uh, the plants right now just to keep them wet for the night. And uh, there's something else I was gonna say. I didn't have anything else to say. See you tomorrow. All right, so I've got all my plants laid out. I've got a bunch of cucumbers over here, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, a bunch of herbs, got some seeds. Uh, we're gonna be planting beets and beans, climbing beans on the uh, on the trellis over there. All right, so we're gonna I'm gonna lay all these out where I'm gonna put them, uh, spread them out where I need them. And then I'm going to plant them all, and, uh, and we're almost done. Here we go. We're in the ground. So let me walk you through what I've um, what I've put in the garden. Here we go. I've got mostly tomatoes in this one. So I've got one of those um, Roma tomatoes there. I put beans right down the middle there uh, to climb up that trellis. Got big fat uh, beefy boys or whatever you call them there. Put a pot over here with another tomato, but these are gonna be like cherry tomatoes. Going in the middle, I've got some, what are the, those are peppers right there on the end. That's a, 
habanero and I know that bush is out so that's gonna be a pretty good place for it love to get some flowers in there for color as well as bring in some bees and butterflies um, rosemary love it same thing there flowers and then right there we got Tabasco pepper so that's not gonna be a big big plant either so I'm good with that size there over here what I've done is down the middle is peppers on the ends are sweet potatoes I'm sorry on the sides are sweet potatoes and on the ends I put herbs so basil this is some jalapeno jalapeno uh, peppers there look at those sweet potatoes all the way down the middle gold standard sweet peppers and that's probably just a green pepper there I believe that's thyme. got some thyme there thyme is on my side got some parsley more sweet potatoes right along there I believe I got some oregano right there look at that little parsley over here hey by the way um that's um potting soil not garden soil because I need that a little bit looser because it's not going to uh drain as much peppermint boom over here on the ends I've got cucumbers that are going to go up this trellis all the way over the, the trellis dome in the middle you can't see it here but I've got four rows of beets we'll check those out later more cucumbers on this end a couple of things this wire thing very important great got that at Home Depot and by the way invest in these things so I built those same kind of wire that's on my arch here I built those about eight years ago and they're they're just as good as they were when they started strong sturdy hold up peppers and tomatoes like a champ use them year over year uh, you just cut you can count how many squares I got there let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven squares wrap it around seems to be a really good size so there's the garden I put a little uh, mulch on the outside just for weed reduction I need some more love to get some statues around the outside got some just some fun decorative things just to make it interesting and make mama happy all right there we go gardens done see you in a couple months we'll be eating well oh boom what about the hummingbird feeder brings the hummingbirds and they love it here all right we're all in i really hope that was helpful shoot me uh um some notes and in, in the i don't know they point they always point down like post something here to send me a comment i don't know i don't know what i'm pointing at but it's down there somewhere send me a comment if you have any questions i'll be glad to answer those for you thanks for joining me